Okay, so I just pulled all of my injector lines and re-swapped out all my injectors. So now I've got to bleed the lines. Since I've pulled the lines, some of the fluid has drained out, so I've got to now bleed them correctly. Now, I've seen several people have had issue with this, um, taking quite a while, etc. So I'm going to show you the way that I found to do it quite right. First thing to do is you got to make sure you got a, your 5 8 wrench, and you want the end that is uh, on the injector to be just like eighth of a turn from tight. So you've just got, it's just loose a little bit. Fuel will build up and uh, come out right around the top here because it's not tight. So what we're going to do is we're going to crank the uh, engine over and watch for fuel. When we see fuel come out, we tighten that cylinder. It's not going to be perfect, but once we get to that point, we just have to uh, crank it a few times until it finally starts. The reason being is you've got to fill up the injector if it's not already full as well, and there may be air in there. Now, what I found is you part of this is we want as much fuel coming from the injector pump as we can. So that means putting the accelerator all the way down. We need to have fuel, so we've got it's got to be ready to start. That means the key on, that means the uh, fuel solenoid on. So this here is the fuel solenoid lever uh, wire, and if we ever need to kill the engine, mainly because it starts, just pulling it off will kill it. If you don't have a uh, spade terminal or something on here, you may want to modify your vehicle to have it because it makes it very easy to just easily kill your engine from right out here. Now, the other thing is that, as you can see, I my throttle is staying all the way at max. I've taken the spring off. I've taken the uh, throttle linkage off. That means that there's no spring holding it back. Now, as far as starting it goes, I don't want to go into the cabin because then I can't see anything. So, right over here, I'm not sure where it would be on a van, but on all these trucks, this is the starter solenoid. This wire up here is the trigger wire, and this is what hap This is what gets pulled hot when you press down the key. This guy here is where all the power comes from, so this is hot at all times. This here is hot when you provide power to the solenoid. So this goes down to the uh, thing. Now you could short these two, but I found the easiest thing is to just short this as long as you're shorting it and cranking it. Now if you've got a really nice couple of uh, an alligator clip uh, starter button, like they sell at Harbor Freight for a few bucks, that's great. Otherwise, this wrench will work nicely. There's stock a uh, boot that goes over here that goes down to your key, but you got to pull that off. Now make sure your truck is in neutral, and then we crank. What I'm going to do is just use my wrench here and short those two terminals. Got to make sure that you do it hard, or you'll just you'll hear it'll just not really run because you're just bouncing off the terminals. So you got to hold it as long as you're cranking. So let's let's see what happens. Aha. As you can see that cylinder there has bubbled a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to tighten this guy up. Now, I don't see any more oil, so let's do it again. I'm holding my wrench against that terminal and then sliding it down. I found that works best. So let's see. Hmm, that one looks like there's a little bit of moisture on it, but I'm going to wait for a few more seconds. Yep, I'm seeing bubbles coming out there. But I'm not seeing any real fuel, so it's just pushing air out most likely. Okay, now back here, number uh, seven, 
You can see that it's all wet, so let's tighten this guy down. And number six, wet, let's tighten that one down. And number five, wet, or uh, one, three, five, seven, so this would be number five. Give it a tighten. Number one is still dry, along with um, number what eight and number two. So these two middle ones, that's tight, and that's not tight. So it could start right now, so if I need to, I'll just drop my wrench and pull that off. Now I'm seeing some bubbling right down here, so I'm pretty sure that's that. Came out the bottom instead of the top. And that one may have also. So at this point, I'm just going to call it good. Make sure everything's tightened. As long as we've got five or six cylinders, it sh the uh, engine should start. However, at this point, my engine's somewhat cold, so I'm going to probably need to use some uh, ether if it doesn't start. Or I mean, sorry, glow plugs. Ether is also a use if you don't have your glow plugs running, but if you do have your glow plugs on, then you don't want to use ether. However, sometimes when we're starting it like this, getting it to start fire on glow plugs is hard because you're only going to be firing on a few cylinders until it works it, all the air works out. So, okay, so I'm going to need to use some. Uh, some uh, glow plugs so I'm going to uh, I've got manual glow plugs on this so let's see what happens so my glow plugs I've got the ninth glow plug up here so I can see when it starts changing color and when it warms up I'll see it and then I can just go all right let's try that There we go. It only took what eight minutes to clean the lines. I'd say that's pretty good. Anyway, now I'm gonna have to retime this now that I've changed the injectors. So I suppose I can show you guys how to do that at some later date. Anyway, good luck doing it.